You've heard the fuss. It is a visceral, profound experience, which is very hard to describe in words. This thing was a phantasmal vision that completely changed the course of my life. We'll get back to those two. Let's talk about these two, the sun and the moon, crossing the sky in a total eclipse. If you're in southern Ontario, very close or right over your head on April 8th. So how do you get the most out of it? Nicola Aurora is the Eclipse Outreach Coordinator at Queen's University. So you need two things to view an eclipse. The first one is excitement. You need to be extremely excited about it. You need to appreciate that this is a once in a lifetime profound event that you want to be a part of. And the second thing you need are eclipse glasses. Okay, so protect your eyes. Just like any other day, you don't want to stare directly at the sun, but during an eclipse, that's where the action is. There are warnings against uncertified eclipse goggles online, so Nick recommends a trusted retailer or scientific institution that may be sharing them. The Aviation and Space Museum in Ottawa has some for sale. Dear Justin, look, they are right here. There's no better place to learn the right way to use them from a real planetary scientist. So can you tell me how to use these eclipse glasses safely during the eclipse. It'd be my pleasure. So first thing you want to do once you've determined they're certified uh, is check out the filters themselves to make sure they're not scratched or they're in damaged or in any way. No scratches? Okay. So then once you're outside we want to always look to the ground first then you can put them on like a regular pair of glasses but make sure they're well in front of your eyes. Once they're on then you can lift your chin up and look at the sun and uh, watch the show. I can't see anything right now. Me neither, because we're inside and the sun's outside. Then you always want to look down again before removing them, so that at no time are you looking directly at the sun without them, unless you're in the path of totality, then you can look back up. But here in Ottawa, we only see a partial eclipse. So if you're in a, a zone where you see just the partial eclipse, it's never safe to take them off. All right, well, looks like I better get traveling. We've got our eclipse glasses and we know how to use them. Now let's find the best place to watch the eclipse in the path of totality. Like Cassandra just said, Ottawa won't be in the path and will just have a partial eclipse. To be in the path, Ottawans need to head south. Don't think that a 90 or 95% eclipse is any kind of total eclipse at, at all. It, it is not. Uh, you must be very clear that you have to be in that path of 100% eclipse or you will miss all the tremendous uh, phenomenon that we're after. This is David Makepeace. He's been chasing eclipses for 30 years. He's heading all the way to Mexico to have a clear view of the April total eclipse. Luckily, we don't need to travel that far, but the weather would be nice. Get as deep into the path of totality as you can. The center line um, along the path of totality is where the eclipse lasts longest. If you're willing to cross the border into the States, it's your shortest drive to the longest amount of totality. If for some reason you don't want to cross the border, then you're heading east or west along the St. Lawrence Seaway and then down to Lake Ontario one way or the other. <laughs> So my producer Ryan and I decided to head south to scope out the best viewing spots. Here in Gananoque, this is where they're going to be hosting the total eclipse of the park. They say that this event is going to kick off their summer tourism season early. Normally our season would start around the May long weekend but April 8th is bringing more inquiries and more people through our doors than we have seen in the almost eight years that I've worked here. The local tourism office has ordered nearly enough eclipse glasses for every local, and they're getting ready for overnight visitors and day trippers. Cruise companies in Gananoque and Kingston are opening early to take people out on the water to watch the eclipse. But plan ahead. It's going to be busy in Kingston as they're expecting thousands of people and are hosting numerous parties. So the biggest thing we need to think about is traffic jams and gridlocks. That's what we're trying to avoid. We're really recommending that people on the day either walk or take the transit. Your plans A through Z for the eclipse may depend on traffic and what the weather radar shows that morning. On a day like today when it's snowing, you want to plan how you're going to get around on the roads, rivers, or which side of the border you want to be on. Since the path of totality falls more in New York State, you'll want to head south quickly if the weather turns, and you don't want to be stuck in the car waiting at customs while the eclipse is happening. So maybe the best bet is to just plan to watch the eclipse on the other side of the border. It looks like we're not the only people with that idea. 
the hotel rooms on the U.S. side filled up like more than a year ago. And the short-term rentals uh, have continued to book and book and book as every week has gone on. Just across the bridge, we met Corey Fram with the Thousand Islands International Tourism Council. What we offer is you know, wide open spaces, right? This is the kind of event that really shines a light on a destination like ours. Hotels are charging hundreds of dollars above their peak season rates and requiring multi-night minimums. While it might be too late to book a hotel, there's still room for day trippers, and there's a small town in upstate New York that's expecting a lot of them. So we've made it to Thompson Park in Watertown, New York, smack dab in the middle of the path of totality, where they're holding an event called total eclipse of the park. Anyway, they're going to turn this spacious, quiet park into something that looks a lot more like a rock festival. City officials say it may be the biggest event in the city's history. The live music is expected to hush at 322 during the eclipse. We're expecting an extreme influx of visitors. The highest estimate that we've seen so far is 174,000 people, which would be the largest event um, in anybody's memory to happen in the city of Watertown. That's almost eight times your population? Yes, yes, that is <laughs> significantly more than our population here in the city of Watertown. We're about 22, 24,000 people. We have been trying our best to plan for those higher numbers, especially as far as safety is concerned. Tickets are free, but organizers are asking people to register ahead of time so they can plan. They've already seen tickets set aside for people coming from as far away as Italy and South America. You must keep in mind that there's no right place to see it from except the fact that you're inside the path of totality. You can be by yourself on a sidewalk as long as you can see the sun from your location inside the path of totality, then you're in the right place to see this eclipse. Most importantly, it's the right time to see the solar eclipse. You may never be so close to a total solar eclipse in your lifetime. The next one isn't expected in this region for another 375 years.